Hello again, welcome back to another day, another week of daily Bible study. We're continuing on with the gospel according to Matthew. We're to start chapter 24, which is the start of the last of the five discourses, and it's two chapters long, 24 and 25, and I got a lot of thoughts about this, and they're not all helpful, I don't think. But before we uh, start that together, let's let's pray. Uh, loving God, in this um, time where we are looking at these texts, Lord, with all the things going on in the world, with all the echoes we have in our hearts, uh, Lord, help us to clear away all the distractions, to keep our eyes fixed on you. Help us to not be led astray. Help us to not be deceived. Help us in all things keep our feet rooted and grounded in who you are, who you revealed yourself to be. Lord, we ask you to be with us during this time, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, chapter 24 and 25 uh, are conversations about, or at least are often seen as being conversations about the end. And I want to say at the beginning, you know, you'll notice that uh, one of the uh, one of the very few books that we have not gone through together uh, in this format is the book of Revelation. And that's not by accident. And the reason is because I feel myself wildly inadequate for the task of uh, looking at the book of Revelation. We will do it, uh, but you're going to get a big, I'm, I think about doing a kind of a pre-recorded caveat to just put at the beginning of every single one of them so no one thinks they should take what I have to say too seriously. Um and so the thing is, there's gonna be a lot of conversation about this, and and I and there's so much baggage around these passages, and so much issue, some of which I have some clarity about, some of which I don't, and so you're gonna get a lot of shoulder shrugs from me, both uh, in in this chapter, a little bit in next chapter, uh, but also especially the Book of Revelation. But we'll at least read the text here together first. So um, uh, here we go, starting in verse 24, or sorry, chapter 24. Jesus came out from the temple and was going away when his disciples came up to the point to point out the temple buildings to him. And he said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another which will not be torn down. As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things happen and what will be the sign of your covenant and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to him, said to them, See to it that no one misleads you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened, for those things must take place, but that, uh, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and in various places will be famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginnings of birth pangs. Then they will deliver you to the tribulation, and they will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time, many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Many prophets will arise and mis mislead many. Because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Now, I have to say something about end. And I think we'll come back to this idea of false Christ tomorrow, because there's another pastor where Jesus warns again about false Christs. So I want to talk about this, this notion of this word, the end, because a huge amount of Christian history has said that the end means time as we know it comes to an end. Creation as we know it comes to an end. And then we now step out of that reality into an entirely different reality. And, um, and at least a couple of words have to be said about that. And, and part of what is going to make these chapters and these passages this week more especially difficult is because there's so much ink been spilled over these chapters and these ideas to the point where it kind of comes off as obvious that obviously Jesus is talking about a catastrophic collapse of creation, an absolute destruction of space and time as we know it, and a beginning of a new community that has absolutely nothing in continuity with what we have. And so to the point where to suggest anything else can sometimes sound to people like uh, you are somehow being you know, fundamentally anti-Christian. Um, now, I want to suggest, so, so one of the things that I have read is that people, there's, we, we, we're kind of in a renaissance now of people really, really digging into, over the last 50 years probably, uh, the, the, the context of Jesus' ministry. And one of the things that I have now read from several different sources is that, uh, that almost certainly when Jesus is talking about the end and these other people are talking about the end, they're not talking about an end of creation. They're talking about the end of the current power structures of the world. And I think it's really important to realize this because it's, um, it's the kind of thing where, you know, Jesus is talking about, you know, that not one stone here will be left upon another. And, and this idea of the end of the age, 
the end of the age is not necessarily the same thing as the end of all time as we know it. And it's important to realize that um, when we say the end of the age, um, you know, this idea of having kind of Jerusalem torn down and the temple torn down, that is something that not only is a real historical event that we know about, it also would have been something that was absolutely in the lifetimes of the Gospel according to Matthew and everybody to whom this gospel was written. And so we know that Jerusalem was in fact destroyed and, and sacked uh, in about AD 70 or 72. And so we had this idea of, of people were seeing this destruction of Jerusalem, this destruction of the temple as being in some ways a catastrophic, cataclysmic end of the age. And so when we see it in that context, uh, then the, the words of Jesus are, seem to come off as saying, don't panic, don't jump to conclusions, don't let your emotions carry you away with them. You know, be patient because things are going to be going on here. And there's a lot of things that have to happen before the end has come. In fact, one could really argue that uh, the coming of Jesus in the first place really, in many ways, is, um, you know, a, a, an incredible act of grace that, that, that God has chosen to come to be among us long before uh, the actual kind of conclusion of all things. And so Jesus is really saying, you know, you're all worked up, you're all excited, there's all these things going on here, but you need to understand that patience is the word of the day, not panicking is the word of the day. And that's especially important because this conversation about what might happen at the end tends to get people really excited. And this idea of looking around for signs that things might be moving toward the end uh, tends to get people uh, the opposite of patient, the opposite of uh, cautious. Um, and I got to ask right now, like literally at the moment of this recording, uh, we have this massive conflict breaking out between Israel and Gaza. And uh, this is, or rather Israel and Hamas, the terrorist group that leads so much of Gaza. And in the background of all that, we've also had wars, but you know, one of the largest land wars in, in the world, uh, you know, since the World War II. And so we do have these wars and rumors of wars. And we have nations rising up against nations, kings against different kingdoms and famines and earthquakes and all the rest. So this is really... It is hard to read passages like this and not hear echoes of our current situation. Um, and so I guess in, in that context, the best advice that I can give is to remind everybody that there is, that people have always thought they might be in the final generation. And so it is not unusual or weird or anything else for people in our generation to think that we are in the final generation. And the fact that, um, that nobody else who has thought that has been correct should, do two th should, should remind us that we also might not be. We also might take signs that show, oh, this is the worst that it's ever been, and it might just be it's the worst it's been during our lifetime. It might get a whole lot worse. Uh, and, but it also, it's important to remember always, and I always want to follow up by saying, someday, a generation thinking they're the last generation is going to be right. You know, it's definitely going to be happen at some point. Um, but so I want to point out here that Jesus is really saying patience. Don't panic. Don't jump to conclusions, which is precisely the opposite of how we sometimes take these passages. So I'm going to let this first passage of, of several of the similar themes uh, kind of give you a similar point, which is be patient. Don't panic. Um, and, and don't let your own emotions of the, of the rightful things that are going on in the world that are a little bit concerning. Don't let them uh, run away with you. Well, that's all for today. Come back tomorrow. We'll have more of the Gospel according to Matthew. Have a good day.